drown. Heavy duty. Good. Oh, they're still in there. Damn. Woo, top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. I just got off the scale, so I'm gonna go inside and get my ticket at the big house right there. Good lord. Yes, sir. Check out these lights that I put on the side of my tractor, though. I'm talking about spotlight right there. Pointing out to the left and to the right of me. Turn that off. I'll find the switch. Yep. So, we're about to go find out what our empty weight is with half a tank of fuel. Ice spice, ice spice. I parked like that so this dude don't take my hood off. You never know around here, man. Woo! Choo! All right, so we are 32,000 pounds of gross vehicle weight. So, actually, I am lighter than, well, I've got half a tank of fuel as well. 32,000 pounds, if I had a full tank, you could call that 32.5 maybe, right? And uh, 32.5, we're right around, right now we're 32,000 pounds. If I had a full tank of fuel, and all of my securement on me, and, and this and that, and dunnage and boards, I would say we'd be at 33,000 pounds. That means we're lighter than what we would have been before. Before we would have been maybe 33, 33.3, somewhere in there. We're, we're a few hundred pounds lighter, maybe even close to a thousand pounds lighter. I might've been 33 or 34,000 pounds with the old combination. So that's interesting. Hey man, I gotta say, this box comes in clutch, man, when it comes to just grabbing my straps, throwing my edge protectors in there, throwing my straps in there, easy access. These lights are absolutely great. I can see everything when I have to maneuver and back into these places and, and, and this and that. The lights are absolutely a huge help. The toolbox I added is absolutely a huge help. And uh, I had to come to a different location two miles down the road to pick up the last four pallets. It's annoying. I feel like I should charge $100 for that, but I don't got time to be on the phone playing with them because I am in the process of booking another load out of Oklahoma back down to Texas. So it's ATX to be exact. So let me go ahead and get this done and get on the phone and do what it do. So I unloaded that load of bricks and stones and whatever that was at McCoy's building supply. And I deadheaded about 79 miles to my next pickup. I'm supposed to pick it up first thing in the morning. I got to the truck stop. It was still pretty early. So I called ahead at this place and asked them if they could take me this afternoon. And I was only about 10 minutes away. And wouldn't you know it, they're willing to load me today. So if I get this loaded up right now today, I won't have to come here first thing in the morning. And I can skirt, skirt all the way out of here tonight, back to Texas. So this is machinery. We'll see what it is. I'll keep you posted. So we'll just step outside and take a look at the trailer. We'll just take a look at the trailer. We'll just take a gander at the low pro. I like it so far. I did get my scale ticket too. Let me grab that for you. You know what? I don't need to grab that. You saw it in like the earlier clip. I'll just tell you what I said. Half a tank of fuel, empty weight. I was 32,000 pounds even. I'm excited about that because I'm pretty sure with the last trailer I had, 48 foot step deck combo, which is like steel and aluminum and wood combination. This is all aluminum, all aluminum, all aluminum with some, some polished aluminum as well. 32,000 pounds with the other trailer. I'm pretty sure I was about 33.4 somewhere so I think this trailer is easily a good 1,500 pounds lighter. And it's longer. And it's lower. And it's in better shape. So I, I, I do enjoy it. I can feel the weight. I can feel that it's lighter than the last trailer. I can scale more with this trailer. I could probably scale a solid 47, even 48,000 pounds maybe on a good day with this trailer. Uh, my scale weight on the last trailer was like with full tanks, 46.5. I kept it at 46.5. Probably could have got away with 47,000 if uh, burned off some fuel. 
But with this trailer, I can absolutely put 47,000 on with full tanks. I say that. I had half a tank when I filled, I mean, uh, I scaled it. So I'm confident with, you know, 47,000 pounds for sure. I mean, I'm only 32,000 pounds empty, so I'm glad. But this is some of the machinery that we'll be picking up. Stuff like this. It has to be tarped. So I'm a little bit nervous about the tarp situation because I've got one decent six foot drop tarp and then the other one's like a steel tarp. I haven't even unfolded it. I have no idea how big it is. My other type, my other tarp got jacked by a fellow driver. How about that, huh? So, yeah. So, waiting on these guys to come out. They're pulling the stuff out right now. So, when they get here, they're bringing the stuff out right now. They were gonna have it all sitting out here waiting on me to pick it up tomorrow. So that kind of makes me believe it doesn't really need to be tarped because if they were just gonna set it out here overnight, I mean, maybe they checked the forecast and there wasn't a chance of rain or anything, but that being said, they're taking a chance that they're getting wet, but I'll throw the tarp on it and try to get away with what I have, half a tarp, you know what I'm saying? Actually, they've got tarp right here. Yeah, they don't want this stuff getting wet. Well, we'll just see what it do. Oh, also, yeah, they don't want this getting wet at all. But this one is wet. I gotta watch my language. There's water all up in here. Anyways, God, isn't that a beautiful trailer? It is a beautiful trailer. Even though it's a low pro with the little stupid tires that are really expensive, it looks good sitting behind the geese. <clears throat> now, introduction, right? I go by Texas Trucker on TikTok. My truck goes by Tall Geese Heavy, okay? And together, Texas Trucker and Tall Geese Heavy equals Texas Goose. 69 just for I mean, watch my language just for claps and stuff whatever it looks good though so we're gonna wait for them to bring their stuff out i'm gonna go ahead and take some pictures of my combination because i I'm, i really like the way it looks i got to remember to hold my phone sideways i keep holding it upright and uh that does a disservice to you viewers because it looks like I'm filming with a potato. It looks better though on the side, right? Let me try to get into the habit of that, damn it. All right, so we're doing the whole hold the camera to the side now because I keep messing up. So uh, I did find some damage on the trailer that I didn't know about because I didn't take my time to look at it when I picked it up, but you can see that there's all kinds of damage right here. It's not, you know, structurally bad or anything. It just looks like ass. And, you know, I gotta tell the owners so that way, you know, they don't try to say I did it. So I also sent them a picture this morning of the rub rail. The rub rail is destroyed too. See that? I think y'all see that, right? Yeah. So I sent him a picture. He texted me, said, bring it by. We'll weld it up for you. So I could go get it welded up. And I'm on my way over there actually tomorrow. I mean, not over there. I got this, this load I'm picking up. So I actually headed <laughs> right over there. So maybe I'll take the time to stop in and have them fix me up. I honestly don't care about that. You know, that's just one spot, but I ain't got the time to be dicking around with that anyway. But look at the tires though. These are brand new tires for the most part. I mean, I say brand new. They're they're not they're not heavily used. They're worn. These are a little bit more new used, but the ones on the front, they're definitely definitely newer. And I love the fact that I have a trailer with polished aluminum wheels, right? Now they can match my truck, except my truck's not polished. But if I got these puppies polished up, Oh, it'll look sweet. All right. Oh, before I forget, I got a very nasty text today from my previous carrier, the carrier, the owner of the last carrier that I was leased under. Set you guys up real fast. So basically, he wanted a copy of my driver's license. He called me about three times. 
I didn't answer because he doesn't answer my phone calls. For like two weeks I was calling him. He didn't answer my phone calls. So now you're calling me. Well, okay. Well, you can text me, right? So he texts me. He wants a picture of my license so he can give it to the insurance so they can pull my truck off of his insurance policy. I've never heard of that. So I told him, no, I'm not going to see my driver's license because you don't need that to take trucks off of your insurance policy. But then he said, if you won't help me take my truck off the insurance, then don't, don't ever contact me again when you don't ever depend on me or something like that. And I was like, I fired off. I stopped depending on you when you stopped answering the phone. That's what it was, dude. Like, you know, but I don't know why he took it personal. Then he threatened to I'll just show you guys the text messages and you'll see that uh, <laughs> he's tripping. So right there, you can see right there where he sent me the location of the trailer. We had a phone conversation right before he sent me those pictures asking me to go pick up the trailer for him and to keep it safe because the other lease operator left it there, just left it there. And so he needed somebody to pick it up for him and he called me to do it. I didn't ask him for anything in return. He had me go pick it up. There's the pictures he sent me to where it was. He asked me to take it and keep it safe. That's what I did. What do I look like stealing a reefer trailer? Come on, dude. You know I didn't steal that. You asked me to go pick that up for you and keep it safe because you didn't have anybody else to go do it. And I did it. I didn't ask you for anything in return. So for you to threaten me with calling the cops and lying and saying that I stole it, no, I didn't steal it. I kept it safe for you like you asked me to when you asked me to go pick it up and store it. And I'm literally telling you, you can go get the trailer whenever you want to. That's some weak ass energy. That is some weak energy right there. That's weak energy. That's weak. All right, here at the pickup. You guys are staying after hours to load me today. They also told me that they didn't know how heavy it was. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna lift it up with the machines get into position and I'm gonna back under it. I asked him how heavy it was, he said about 10,000. So I'm okay with that. So I'm waiting on them to get in position, lift it up and I'm gonna back under it. We'll see how this goes. Hey man, dude was dirty too. I'm talking about black coal ash all over his face. These guys are dirty, man. They're hard workers though, but just take a look out here. It's a dirty ass place to be for sure. I don't know what it is that they do here, but it's definitely, we'll, we'll see what the load is. We'll go and see. Can y'all push it over a little bit? Come here a little more. All right. Good grief. 
Oh, that's going to need to be sharp. Not bad, not bad. What this thing is. All right, so we're going to take our height stick. We're going to measure this ducting right here. Just to be clarified of how tall we are. So jump down from here to here, pull this puppy out, and we'll get to measuring. All right, here's our load. It's a peculiar load. We'll start at the front. This thing is a computer box switch panel or something like that. Can't really get wet. Uh, and it swings around on that pole. They told me they were going to swing it over to one side and do it like that, but then that would have made this load overdimensional. So we opted to, uh, I put two, two inch straps here and two ratchets and made a loop and pull them back uh, against each other. The ideal way to do it is like this, an endless strap. This is a two inch strap that have had the hooks cut off of both ends and you use it as one, wrap it around like a belly strap and two ratchets pulling against each other evenly. This is the way you want to do it. I didn't do it up here because that means I would have to sacrifice another two inch strap. And I guess I could do that, but I didn't want to. But I think this is good enough. Shouldn't go anywhere. We'll figure that out later. This is a die cast machine. Basically, it's a machine that grinds metal into beautiful pieces. Probably grinds down billet, you know, steel or aluminum or whatever the case may be. And so it's got metal powder, black powder shavings everywhere, all over this thing. That's all metal, man. So this whole load is supposed to be tarp. It's not going to be tarped. I am going to tarp. I basically asked them what can't get wet. That can't get wet. This is okay. That inside can't get wet. That can't get wet. That can't get wet. And that can't get wet. That being said, that's all going to be tarped. That's not. That is... You know, I would wrap a bag around it or something small tarp, but I don't have anything like that. And uh, I checked the forecast. It looks good. We're running tonight, baby. We are running tonight. We're going to run this load all the way out of here, out of out of the Tulsa area. And it's gonna go to uh, um, out there by Weatherford, Texas. So yeah, so I'm gonna get to work on this. You already know what we're gonna do, right? Two straps on that. I got one four inch strap on that. That thing's really light. Um, I might actually throw like some two inch straps around the base just to keep the base stable. You know, because if I put too much pressure on that, it's bending the frame of it, the top. So we're not gonna do that. So I'm probably gonna cinch down this, uh, the, the base of it. And like I said, straps, I already got two four inch straps on this big one right here. I'm gonna throw the tarp over that, over that and over that, try to make it nice and tidy. This can't get wet either. This absolutely cannot get wet. But good thing the weather says it's okay. So. You know, they didn't, and they told me it needed to be full tarp load, but they didn't tell me I needed, you know, eight foot tarps or six foot tarps or any of that stuff. And the top of this thing is actually, we're at 13 feet, four inches. So yeah, we are there, man. You see all that black off the top? Good Lord, that's all that damn metal. That's why them guys are dirty as hell. So we get after it. All right, here is the grand finale. So I already showed you this, right? You want to use endless straps, a, a two inch strap that's got no hooks on either end. You cut them off both ends and you put two ratchet straps on each end of it and you, you, you wrap it around like so, right? Belly strap, whatever you want to call it. That's the proper way to do this so that it's pulling in both directions. Keep it stable. This is not the way you want to do this. I just improvised because I didn't want to cut up another two inch strap. But in hindsight, I would do it again though. I, I definitely should have just did that, but whatever, this is what we're working with. Uh, so. I'll definitely not do that again. I'll definitely do it the correct way like that. Now, this is one of my 30 foot chains. It's way too long for this job, but you see all the slack that we have here. This is all slack. This is slack. This is binding and tight. This is binding and tight. So here's what I did here. I used my chain pockets. So I've got, I took the one end I ran it through both ends all the way through. So I had a chain hook over here, ran it all the way through that end and had a chain hook over there. Took the end of the chain, came around the spools back to itself. 
took the loose end, the slack end, this is all one chain, and came around here to the binder, to the chain pocket. That's how you do that. You do the same thing on the other side. You've got slack here. I took the bungees here to take up some of the slack. You can't do this and have the chain in the middle tight unless the binder is binding in the middle and you're using one binder with one chain. We could have did that, right? We could have ran the hooks through the spools over here or over here. Probably not right there, but see, I gotta watch my language. That's messed up, but that's not what we did. This is how we did it. Now, I feel like they wanted this to be tarped not only to keep it from getting wet, like all the electrical components, but also there's gonna be a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of dust, like black metal shavings blowing in the wind off this thing so it's gonna look like a damn charcoal machine going down the highway next same thing back there in front we did back here this is like a 25 foot chain run i had to take the hook off and run it through the eyelet run the chain from this end all the way across to the other end this is the slack right here in the middle if i were to do this and this was tight this is one chain, two binders. That would be a DOT violation if this was tight and binding. You gotta have slack in there and play when you're using one chain like that to do two things, okay? So we did. This is why I like chain pockets. You can do a lot of things with them. And here we are again. That's done. That's done. I took the two straps and secured the base and that. That technically should probably have two straps going over it, one more towards the rear and one more towards the front. But because of where I let them place the box, that was my mess up. Uh, there's really nothing, there's no winch right there, obviously. And uh, yeah, but that's tight enough. I know that's not going nowhere. If it does, I messed up. But I have full confidence in my ability here. Knock on wood with that, huh? So. Here we are, checking everything, everything's tight. This is a little bit loose because that's kind of fragile. This is tight, this is tight, shouldn't go anywhere. And this is like the bounciest part of the damn trailer too, but hey, you heard me. <laughs> so, checking everything, making sure it's good. That's it, man, that's it. And with the power of YouTube, I'm gonna check the forecast and tarp it. You heard me. Let's get down. Oh, I bet y'all want to know what this load span, huh? Well, we're going to call it 379 a mile because that's what it is. So I'm going to head about five minutes. No, I'm sorry, about 12 minutes up the road. Hit the loves. Shower. I was supposed to exercise and work out today, but I plan on leaving at uh, 1 a.m. So Gee -gee! time to shower and go to nap. So I'm walking around doing my pre-trip, right? I figured now would be a good idea before I take off. And, uh, you know, everything looks good. I'm looking at my new shiny parts. You know, I got my new pulleys on there, my new belts, my new fan clutch, checking on my nuts and bolts and everything and hoses. And what do I find? Of course I find something, right? Thank God I did. That was a leak waiting to happen. This coolant hose here has been chafing up on this AC line pretty tough. And uh, that's why, because this is broke right here, so I'm going to, I'll probably take a zip tie and wrap that around here. And then for safe measure, I figured I'd take this here piece of carpet and wrap this some, so let's wrap some zippy ties around it. I hope that doesn't make an issue, but let me go ahead and zippy tie this up right here. You heard me? See, I told you. I gotta watch my language. Oh, Lord. Yeah, man. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Woo. Like a battery rooster. Hey, I just checked the forecast. It is not gonna rain. That means we're burning the midnight oil tonight, baby. So, uh, I ain't gonna lie to you, these showers are getting stupid expensive. Last night at the pilot, damn, I, I gotta watch my language, YouTube, God. Last night it was $18 at the pilot, 
here at the Loves, it's fifteen dollars, and I'm like, yo, that ain't right. It used to be twelve dollars at the Loves and twelve, maybe fourteen dollars at the Pilot. I'm not feeling this, man. Definitely gonna be going to mom and pop shops to get showers for eight, ten bucks, whatever they are, because yo, almost twenty dollars for a shower? It's re it's irate. It's absolutely irate. Everything's going good though. I can't wait to start that midnight oil tonight, get all my little lights and lamps on and look real pretty going down the freeway. That being said, that's my old trailer, similar to my old trailer. That being said, look, he's in the, the drive-in right now. He, I gotta watch my language. What are you messing with over there? Both of y'all. So anyway, that being said, <sighs> gonna get this shower, eat me a little Subway, Take a nap, nap if I can. If not, I'm pound of Red Bulls. We got ya. You heard me? I ain't gonna lie to you. You know where I got that? You heard me? I got that boy Brian Lee, man. Cattle cartel. Texas Goose. All right. Time to burn that midnight oil. You heard me? I'm finna do this pre trip right now and shake these lights, baby. Oh, they probably don't like that. <laughs> The pre-trip. The pre-trip. That, I don't like that at all. I should have did that like I did this one. This one is solid. That is not. But I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. I wish I wasn't touching this. I watch my language, YouTube, Jesus. Anyways, I wish I wasn't touching this because I want to get my hands dirty and I sure as hell, I wonder if I can say that, didn't put on any gloves. put on some gloves so i'm gonna walk around and do the little light check real fast then i'm gonna put some gloves on and actually check this securement like i need to all the lights are working beautifully getting unloaded nothing fell off so right now i've got everything all the chains taken off all the straps taken off just cleaning up everything they're gonna run two forklifts under it lift it up and we'll drive out damn what happened all right and i'm empty it looks like this is the stuff that they forge and make uh, and grind out with a die grinder. That is a large robotic grinding machine, a die grinder. So that's what that thing is. It's basically like a CNC machine, right? So I'm empty right now, waiting on the paperwork. That thing by itself had to be like 25,000 pounds. Anyway, everything went smooth. Get my paperwork and skedaddle, you heard me? Shout out to the Retinor. It, it looks really good up against the geese. Coupled together like a man and wife, married to a trailer. Tall geese, tall geese, heavy. Married to the Retinor, low pro. I should have titled this, how to make 
$2,925 in two days. I'm at Home Depot right now. It had two stops. This is the last stop right here. Cow manure. So yeah. Home Depot. I probably won't do another one. I hate doing runs. But in two days, almost made 3,000. Not bad. I'm tired though. Three loads. Good morning. I just woke up. You can tell with my chink eyes. <clears throat> well, this morning we're installing a new dash cam and a keep trucking ELD. That's what we're doing this morning. I've already pulled out the old ELD. It's a Sam Sarah. It's really easy to pull out. This literally is just stuck to the dash, like so up here. This is the dash cam. Just pulled it off. The uh, dash cam plugs into the back of the ELD. Just unplug that. Pull this out. out. The uh, ELD plugs into the truck right here. So it's a really straightforward process. So I just got me a little rag and some alcohol and I'm gonna rub down the dash. Get these areas clean and try to get the sticky stuff off of the window. So, wow. Set y'all up right here while I'm uh, putting on this ELD. A new dash cam. <clears throat> so, got the new trailer. Trailer's performing pretty well, I'd say. I mean, what I have noticed is that if I'm not really careful, because the trailer's longer, for one, it's on the spread axle. You know, it's a lot of tight turns that I'm just not able to make like I used to. I've been jumping over a lot of curves and grass and stuff like that. So, I got to be more careful about that. And I got to really do better on my button hooks because I'm so used to having a 48 foot that I make it all the time but you really got to take into account the extra length that I've got and aside, another thing that goes along with that is you really got to be mindful of your turns man because them tires will get ate up quicker than shit if you guys if I'm turning too sharp or anything like that so I've got to be really careful with that I really do but other than that, it rides good. I saw some pretty decent loads this morning that I wanted to pull, but I'm not pulling because I'm in the process of installing an ELD dash cam. Um, if the stickers, decals on the truck, I gotta pull the old decals off, put the new decals on, and uh, just stuff like that, really, man. And I didn't get my fuel card yet, so right now I'm gonna have to be using EFS checks so my field card comes in. I forgot to send it. I also got my new winch bar. It showed up last night, so that's awesome. But right now I'm just dry, wiping everything down in alcohol. What I need to be doing is getting that, peeling this uh, adhesive off of this window. So let me go find a razor blade and I'll touch base with you. Oh, I guess we can talk about those three loads that I did too. Uh, man, I picked that first load up first thing in the morning, 6 a.m in Dallas going to like the Tulsa area. Ran that straight through real quick, got unloaded. That was 750. So, you know, it was, wasn't that great. Um, and then right after that, I found another load that was picking up the next day, but I didn't, I just deadheaded like an hour to get there in the Tulsa area. And uh, when I got there and stopped, I was like, dude, this place is like 10 minutes down the street. Let me call them and see if they can unload me this, I mean, load me this afternoon. And sure enough, I called them and they were like, yeah, we'll load you. And uh, man, it was like 2.30 in the afternoon when that happened. So ran over there real fast and got loaded. Did my 10 and took off at like, you know, two, three, four in the morning, whatever that was. And uh, ran that straight through to damn near Weatherford, Texas, Fort Worth area, Weatherford. Ran that straight through, six hour drive, boom, 1500. That was nice. I left money on the table with that one. I, I really probably could have got like 2000 for that load, but I just was like, give me 200 more bucks, I'll take it. Boom, because I needed to get back here to pick up all this stuff, right? ELD and all this crap, because I've been running paper. And uh, so hit that. Same day, I unloaded that. Found another little short hop down to Round Rock, Austin, Texas. Two stops, Home Depots. I hated that. It was very congested and a lot of traffic. I hated it. 
but that was another six hundred and seventy five dollars and boom we have twenty nine twenty five for Monday and Tuesday and I would have liked to have found something coming out of there coming to Houston but I did but it was just too cheap I, I just refused to run for like really cheap just to have some fuel money so I just deadheaded all the way back home yesterday and here we are